Mams and sirs, welcome to the Jared Bellman Show. We are located here at the Center of Arts and Inspiration. My goal is to assist you in your personal and professional growth by talking to community leaders like our guest, Sarah Lida. This episode is brought to you by Pro 16 Productions. Pro 16 Productions combines experience, passion, and innovation to capture the essence of your projects. Sarah Lida is the buyer specialist of BB&G Real Estate Group with Remax Results. Born and raised in Hendersonville, North Carolina, she has seven generations of her family currently living in Western North Carolina. She made the choice at 15 to homeschool in order to enter the workforce with the licensing requirements needed as a real estate professional at the age of 18. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, not a problem. So let's get started with a few uh, easy questions. Sure. Maybe, we'll see. Do you read? Yeah. Okay, so what is the most influential book that you've read in the last six months? Hmm. You know, that's a really tough question. There's so many books that I love to read. Um, One that I'm currently reading is Girl, Stop Apologizing, which I love. Currently right now, that is probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty popular one over the last year. It is, yes. Um, what is something in the last six months, and I know the last six months have been somewhat of a transition for you, so what is uh, something you've said no to during those last six months? You know, I have had to learn where I want my focus is to be, and so I think for me it's just been a matter of learning to say no to just some things. I can't do everything, and I can't pinpoint exactly one specific thing I've had to say no to. There's just been little things that I've had to really shift my time and focus in order to make the transitions that have happened in the last six months happen smoothly. That's right. Yeah. I think Richard Branson says uh, that he says yes to everything and that's a way to open up yourself to opportunity. But I don't know. I just don't believe that he really says yes to everything. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) I think that's a really, um, really complicated thing to do. It's, it's, you want to say yes to everything. I want to say yes to everything, but I've had to learn to say no. That's awesome. So, Decision to go into homeschool at 15 years old. How did that? Yeah. I mean, most people would say, man, at 15, she just, she shouldn't be making that big of a decision. But sure. you were pretty headstrong in what you want to do. How'd that come about? I was. So I knew that I wanted to go into the workforce. I did not know what that meant for me. I had no idea what that meant. Um, but I knew that that was where I felt like my calling was. It's what I wanted to do. And so I actually had a job opportunity that was arising at a real estate office and I knew that it was going to be impossible for me, maybe not impossible, but I didn't want to go to high school and work a full-time job. That just well, didn't make sense. So it was the workforce for me and that was That's awesome. made sense to go homeschool at that time. So what was the benefit of homeschooling? Obviously you were able to work 40 hours a week, but what the, the transition, because some people would say, well, you could have had some of that opportunity and still go to public school or, mm-hmm. or private school, but What was the benefit of homeschooling during that period of time? Sure. So the benefit was that I was able to really individualize my courses in a way that led me into the workforce with stronger experience. Instead of having a class of 30 students who were trying to do all of the same things, I was able to really pinpoint what I wanted to do and focus on that in high school. That's awesome. So just really disciplined and focused in getting into the workforce in the way you wanted to. That's great. So the first job was at a uh, real estate office. Mm -hmm. How did uh, that come about? So I had an agent in the office who actually worked there, happened to be my aunt, and I worked in the real estate office. I thought I was going to go to college for interior design, and she knew that. And she thought, you know what, real estate would be a good kind of foot in the door in that industry it's all in the same kind of line of work yeah. and so she I think gave gave put in a good word for me got me an interview and um, yeah I went in and went from there that's awesome so what was your first job so to say in the in the office so I was an office administrator an administrative assistant in the office and um, I kind of did the paperwork I made sure files were compliant I learned real estate terms I just was there to help the agents so you really probably learned a lot about the work of real estate because there is a HDTV, right, million dollar listing that, right. that um, portrays real estate agents as something that really isn't where the work is, right? You're exactly right. So you were able to learn that at a very early point. How has that influenced the long-term success of your career? It has influenced the long-term success tremendously. I would probably not be where I am now had it not been for that experience. Going into that and learning more about the real estate industry and what it offered and the terminology and all of those things really got me where I am now. It helped me throughout school. The encouragement of having those other real estate agents, even even more so. 
That's great. Yeah, the I think there's a um, underutilized um, asset of mentorship and, and being mentored or being a mentor. Yes. Um, so important. So how, who maybe was that, and and how did they, how did that come about? Because a lot of people ask me like, how do I find a mentor? And you don't want to just hey, can, will you be my mentor, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. got to be a relationship thing and it's got to yeah. be a right fit. So how did that come about for you? So actually the gentleman, uh, Dave Noyce, with, with where I was at the time, he was actually the broker in charge that interviewed me for that job position. I had no idea the part that he would end up playing in my career. He was so supportive. He had faith in young professionals and um, saw that in me and he ended up being a huge mentor. He was the one who encouraged me to finally go to real estate school and pursue that. And um, he made sure I had all the tools to, su- to succeed, and it was fantastic. That's great. Yeah. So I assume during that time you went to licensing school and, and went through that whole process. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, sure. So he, like I said, encouraged me to get into real estate school. I went to real estate school at 17, and um, with his support and studying, he was there to answer all the questions. Him and another agent, Betty Oates, who was with the same company, they were... Um, really just huge support systems through that schooling. It was stressful, it was a lot, and they answered every question I had. And um, yeah, so I graduated school shortly after I turned 18. That's awesome. And so at that point, you were literally the youngest real estate agent, probably in the state. Probably. Probably in in the country. (laughs) Sure, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) For at least that short time. Um, Well, that's great, that's great. So you went directly into the sales force at 18. do you think you missed out? Do you think that it was the, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. Were there things that you think you missed out on? You know, I, I wondered that for a long time. Um, I especially wondered if, you know, being an 18-year-old in the workforce was going to work for me. And I thought at first that without a college degree, I wasn't going to get anywhere. And so initially there was a lot of doubt. Um, I did go straight to the sales force and um, worked. I partnered with Betty Oates and she really helped me get my feet on the ground and really encouraged me and told me that it is possible. You don't have to go to college to make this work and really gave me the faith that I needed. Yeah, that's awesome. I always tell people insurance is the same way. You don't have to have a college degree. Um, And so for uh, students that just you know, feel that it's not the way. If you really want to put in the hard work and you want to do the educational piece on your own, you don't have to necessarily go to college. There's benefits to it, um, but there's benefits to not doing it also. Yeah. So you said that there were uh, difficulties. So overcoming those obstacles is usually a good step to have strength long term in your career. And mm-hmm. uh, you're still definitely young enough that you're going to have a, a long career in real estate, we hope. Um, so what are some of those early on obstacles that you had to overcome being a young professional in, honestly, a, a industry in this area that is, is not young? Yeah. And maybe more so becoming, but I would say not as young, under 25. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the biggest obstacle for me was really just get it, you know, gathering some confidence in, you know, I am a young professional, but I can do this and just really accepting that and um, listening and really leaning into those people who were there to support me. Um, the biggest obstacle, though, is that a lot of people didn't trust an 18-year-old to sell or, or help them buy a house. And so for me, it was just learning to to get, to get be okay with that, really, to accept that and um, learn from the experiences. You know, there were a lot of times I sat down at a dining room table and I didn't get the listing. And it, I learned to be okay with that and learned to walk away thankful for that experience anyways. Yeah, and I think that's huge. Taking the L is a, is a great learning experience. Yes. Um, what are some other things that you did? Because obviously, being a young professional, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I had the same problem in my insurance career. I had not a lot of insurance expertise, yeah. and um, and was new to the industry. I came from a sales position that was in four walls, and so we, you know, people were walking in. I was in the restaurant industry, so mm-hmm. people walked in. I could be the best salesman. You're hungry. I could sell you. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, but you know, in in real estate and in insurance, people aren't necessarily come to us hungry, and especially mm-hmm. uh, as a buyer specialist. Yeah. Some people think they're hungry, but really aren't hungry. People wish they could walk into a certain kind of restaurant, but they're mm-hmm. not, right? They, they, they have an expectation of what they think, especially with the way media has portrayed real estate in the last mm-hmm. decade um, on TV. So how did you, or, or what were the specific things that you did to show that you could be trusted? Yeah. So I, um, I immediately focused on 
one, education. I really focused on education and what I could learn, what I could do better, and wanted to make sure that I was going to the table, to these dining room tables to meet with clients with the most knowledge that I possibly could. And, um, you know, that was the experience I had. I might not have actual field experience yet, but I could have all the educational experience that I wanted. And so I really leaned into that and really gathered as much educational experience as I could. And then I learned to focus on the people who were like me, the people who didn't know the process and how I could help them learn the process just like I had just done. That's awesome. Yeah. So you almost found your niche. Exactly. Naturally, right? It just was a, a natural occurrence mm-hmm. to find people that, and that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I, um, I really believe in the education sales model so yeah. there's people that are that are pushers there's people that are just you know transactional based mm-hmm. and I can tell from my relationship with you uh, that you are definitely not transactional based you are relationship building and so how has that developed so over the the three four years how long has it been yeah so licensed for two and a half okay. years um, in the business for a little over I guess three. So how have those relationships built over three years? It's been incredible to watch some of my relationships build. I have um, been a witness in some of my clients weddings at this point like it's been a lot of fun and that's really why I chose real estate in the beginning was because I wanted to build relationships with people in my community. You mentioned earlier I'm local I have deep roots in this community and I wanted to continue to build that and make my footprint as well that I had seen so many of my ancestors do. So um, it, I've seen it continue to grow. That's really been my mission is just to build those relationships and watch my real estate career go in that direction. That's so awesome. Um, so there's relationships with clients, but there's also relationships with real estate agents. Yes. How has that been being a young professional with elder, more experienced. Um, I mean, I know agents in this town that have 35 years experience um, in this town. So how's that gone? It's been interesting. You know, there's some agents who um, look at me like I'm I'm just too young. And that's been a learning curve and has been frustrating at times even. But then again, there's been so many agents who have really just supported me and have been there to give me advice and I've learned to accept that advice and I've learned to take it not as criticism but just as advice and um, you know working with Betty even for the first year or so was incredible I mean I owe a lot of my career to her she was fantastic and she had faith in a younger generation and she wanted to see me grow and I've seen a lot of that most real estate agents are really really accepting of a younger generation coming in to help with the business that's awesome I'm so glad to hear that there's definitely a competition in the real estate industry. Uh, We feel it in the insurance side too, uh, especially in this area um, with the generational gap of of agents, Mm because we're both agents. Um, But there is, I mean, there's only so much business, but then I think our generation is um, looking at it as there's enough to go around Mm -hmm. and and we understand specialization. And like you said, you realize that the educational piece was gonna be how you won. Um, And I think that gets dropped uh, sometimes by older agents who assume uh, more and so you're n- not being unassuming has uh, really helped. So why real estate? So you said uh, interior design, mm-hmm. which I understand that there are so many industries within the real estate industry, things that uh, connect between. Yeah. Um, I deal with roofers and uh, home inspectors and all kinds of things. I mean, there's yeah. so many people that go into just closing on a house. Um, how did, how did real estate become the passion? Yeah, so sitting at the desk when I worked at um, 17 years old behind the real estate desk, I came to realize about six months into that, maybe even less, that I wanted to be on the other side of that table. I wanted to be on the other side of the desk. I wanted to be the one handing in files. And um, I saw agents come in and meet with their clients and just the looks on their faces and they found the house that they wanted and I wanted a part of that. I wanted to give back to my community in the same way that I was watching these agents do every day. And um, that was how it happened. Yeah, I thought interior design. And even when I got the job at the real estate office, I still kind of thought interior design was my was my path. And um, it just took sitting at that, at that desk and, and watching others do real estate for me to fall in love with the business. And I saw how interior design would fall right into that. I would still get to appreciate that hobby, but I think I just learned that maybe that wasn't the career. Yeah. And sometimes we have to make the um, financial decision mm-hmm. that this is, this is what's going to make us money. Yeah. Um, so 
you're now on a new team, basically, yeah. um, as a buyer specialist, and I really have seen you uh, maybe come into your own stride, right? So I, I've always, we met through Instagram, yes. I believe. And so there's not a lot of people in the real estate industry that, uh, at least not three years ago, were on Instagram the way you were, mm -hmm. which is why I connected with you. Um, but now it seems like you're on a team that is playing to your strengths, that is empowering you. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the dynamics of that team and how that, that came to fruition. Yeah, absolutely. This is really an exciting topic for me. This is still a new thing. This team is, you know, just growing. And about a year ago, me and some of my colleagues, all locals, saw a real need in the real estate industry for a group of real estate agents that were more than just that, that really embraced their community, wanted to share that community with newcomers and locals all the same. And, um, and, and so that's what we did. We built this team that is a boutique brand grounded in gratitude. And it's just, you know, really there to, we are so thankful for our clients and we wanted to build a team that thrived on that and gave back to them. And so, um, it's been a really exciting journey. It has, um, definitely allowed me to really play into my strengths. I love Instagram. I love social networking. I think it's important in our industry. And um, I love how Instagram allows me to share my own personal, you know, wants and needs and likes as well as real estate because let's face it, there's a lot of real estate agents out there and it's really important, I think, to share what makes you different. Yeah, that differentiation is, um, is key to success yeah. in, in social marketing. But you engage also, so it's not just posting on a platform, right? And mm -hmm. I've always, um, said I'd, I'd prefer to see people stop posting and engage more use it as a social mm -hmm. platform um, so tell me some things that you're doing to gain clientele right yeah. because it's great to put yourself out there and look good and I always joke with realtors because I'm like if I could do Instagram then you can because my product <laughs> is not pretty my product does not look good sure. um, there's really no thing right I can right. take a picture of a couple a contract um, and, and realtors have the things. Yeah, the things, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, for them not to be on there, I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah. So, but what are you doing to, I mean, let's get down to the degree, make the money, right? Because yeah. you can put pretty things out there all day. How are you connecting with clients through social media? Yeah. So it's really, like I said, sharing my personality on top of real estate, because people can get real estate information anywhere. Now with the world that we live in, that's very computer centric. You can find real estate advice anywhere. So it's really been reaching out to the community and letting them know what I can do for them outside of real estate too. Real estate is all engulfing. There's so many things that go into it. It's not just buying the house. It's buying the house, the job that comes with the house in the area, um, the restaurants that you want to eat at when you don't have anything to do with your family on Saturday nights, where you can go. And so really offering them that information as well. Excellent. And um, yeah, so that's been definitely my, my Instagram social media journey is just sharing all the things that are community related that's not just real estate. And you said, how are we building our clientele? We really look at it as more as friendships. Like how are we building these friendships that will turn into clientele later? That's really cool. So you and your team are on, you go live a lot. We do go live a lot. <laughs> which is great, yes. which is great. And I think it's, um, it's raw and it's authentic, which is, is a pleasure for me to see. So tell me about some of the things you're purposely doing. Yeah. Um, I know you do Taco Tuesday. So why don't you run through, I know you have a whole week of programming now. So yes. do you want to run through that? Of yeah, I would love to. So we do, we have Taco Tuesday every Tuesday. And what we do is we go out to a local food truck, a local taco truck, and we just sit and chat for a minute on live video, just let you know kind of what our week looks like, what we're doing, where we're at, and just really connect with our followers. And then um, every Thursday, my teammate goes out to a local brewery or winery and um, kind of lets everybody know what those are doing, the people that serve there, and they serve our community just as much as anyone else. So really letting people know what's out there. And on Saturdays, I go live at just a local venue, whether it's a restaurant or a museum or a boutique, to there again just let our followers know what's out there in the community for them and connect with those those people who also serve our community. So there is a whole week of program. You see us go live a lot, open houses, all the things. That's great. That's really, really special. So B, B, and G, what does that stand for? Yeah. So initially it stands for um, a boutique brand grounded in gratitude, but we are actually asking our 
clientele or followers to help us find out exactly what that means for them. You know, BB&G can stand for so many different things, but for us, that's where it started. And um, now we kind of just want to know what our clients think that means. Excellent. That's a, that's a great way to, um, to build a brand. I always say that if you're, if you're choosing your brand off something that you think it should be, you're probably missing out. Yeah. You know, what your clients need and who you truly are. And it sounds like that's what you guys are doing. So tell us how we can, uh, how we can find you. Where, where can we, how can we get in touch with you? If someone has more questions about real estate or maybe uh, other realtors have questions about what you're doing, how could they uh, get in touch with you? Yeah, so I definitely encourage both realtors and individuals to get in touch with us for any reason. Um, you can certainly find us on social media, like you talked about. It's BB&G Real Estate Group on both Facebook and Instagram. My personal pages are obviously just Sarah Lida, Sarah Sells W, Sarah Sells NC on Instagram. Um, but of course, always by phone for a quick response and email as well. And what's your email? My email is Sarah at BB&G Real Estate Group dot com. Simple. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us today. It was thanks a pleasure so much for having, having me. the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching the Jared Bellman Show. Be sure to hit subscribe. Ring the bell for future notifications and check out the description for more information.